So the good news is that the real thing is different. So we are all normal and we are all strange. So we all have a long tail. And, and, and Andre and other people proved this with five different data sets coming from different things like uh, movies, uh, web page access, queries, and so on. In all of them, they found the same. So this experimental proof, of course, you cannot prove this formally. So the reality is that we are all special and we are all normal, whatever normal means. That's good. And the paper is, uh, I will suggest you to read it, to read it. it starts with a great name. The name is um, Ordinary People with Extraordinary Taste. So you have this paradox there. And why this is important? Because that means that if you neglect the long tail, so you don't take care about the long tail, you are not taking care of all of us, at least a fraction of all of us. And this is why the long tail is important, because we are all there. And then you can't say, oh, this is a strange query, I don't care. And so we will always have new queries. So taking this in account, let's say this is PowerPoint, it's not very good to draw graphs. And I switched to a Mac recently, and OK, I was forced to have, I don't have a keynote so yet. So let's say this is the institution of queries. So you have popular queries first, and then the long tail. Assume this is a long log log graph. So maybe the popular part is a log normal distribution. But it will look like something like this. So this is a popular query. So something I haven't seen, but I, I guess we, we take care implicitly in web search, is this. So more strange the query, I would say better the user. So if you search for an article using seven surnames, I'm sure you, you will find it if it's there. So you are doing good search. So maybe for the most difficult queries, we cannot do too much, because you are doing the best possible query for, for that. So are we taking into account the, maybe the skills of the user to answer, or sorry, to pose these queries? So something I will not say anymore, but basically here I will say, okay, we have to take care of something that is between popular queries and the right part of the long tail. We have to take care of the middle. And this is like TF-IDF, right? You multiply and then you get this bump in the middle. Okay. So how we sample the query distribution then? Typically, what you, you see in papers, the most used uh, procedure is uniform sampling. So you sample the distribution. If you have a repeated query, you throw it away. You just repeat it. You want unique queries until you reach the number of queries you decided to have, say 2,000. No repetition. I would call that uniform sampling. This is fine, but doesn't represent the query distribution, right? The second one will be, OK, let's do a large independent uh, sample with repetitions. So we count the frequency. So popular queries will have more weight than long tail queries. But there is a problem. The distribution is a power law. And if you want to capture a real power law, you need to do many, many samples. Because it's very, very skewed distribution. It's not even close to something uniform. So at the end, the frequencies will not be realistic. And I will show you with an example in, in, in a few seconds. So the solution, and we propose this in a paper that we will publish in CAKM 2010, is to don't count the frequencies of our sam our, your sample, but use a larger sample just to estimate the frequencies. So the frequencies are estimated with different, different sample, where you just care about the frequency. And I will give you some results of how this looks. So let's take 50 million, 50 million queries, which in, in web search is a small sample, but just for the sake of uh, the argument. Let's take samples of 1K queries from that distribution, from those 50 million queries, 100K, and 10 million. And let's use the other samples to compute the frequencies for the 1K sample. OK? So each time you're doing a better estimation of the frequencies because you're using a larger sample. 
And then also I want to plot the rank of each query in the 50 million sample, because if the rank is the same, the distribution should be a straight line. If the rank is not the same, you will see deviations that will tell you, OK, uh, the frequency is not well estimated. So this is how it looks like. So the, the green line is the original distribution. The red line is the 1K sample with the frequencies estimated from the 10 million sample, quite similar to the correct distribution. The yellow line, and maybe it's an orange line for you, it's the 1K sample, but with the frequencies estimated from the 100K sample, much better than the original. And you see the 1K sample? It's not even close to the real distribution. And the truth is, when you are using people or crowdsourcing, we're talking about a few thousands to, say, judge. So this, the, the blue distribution doesn't resemble at all the correct distribution. And also, you see the rank. So the 1K sample only reaches uh, less than half of the tail. Well, in, in the log-log graph, if you take the, the absolute uh, value, nothing of the tail. So a normal sample will not hit the tail too much. So here you see the, the plot of the ranking. So you see better. So here, uh, let me highlight this one. This one is, uh, is red, not orange, OK? So this query has the wrong frequency, like this one. But it's on the opposite side of the distribution. So the estimation is wrong. And you see, but still, the red estimation is much better than, the, say, the orange estimation, where you see a lot of variance here. And then, and, and of course, in the, in the 1K, it's really bad. So this is the message here. If you want to estimate the frequency, so to weight which queries are more important than others, you need to do a different procedure. And basically, most papers use uniform sampling, and some other papers use just uh, sampling distribution. But the usual sampling distribution doesn't work well in a power law. And U Hugo Zaragoza was the first one that, that found this. Uh, questions? later. So second problem, getting the right answers. So you need to do evaluation. You need a golden set. Maybe also you need training data for your machine learning algorithm. And there are many ways. So for example, professional editors. Maybe this is the best, but they are expensive. People doing this a whole day. I was with Munia in Russia last week. And, and I, I met the two founders of Yandex. Yandex is the main search engine in Russia. And he told me that they have millions of queries judged for Russian. So, and they have like 200 editors working on this all the time. And they are doing well. But it's expensive. So the second thing is when you don't have money, so let's find something cheaper. And the, the recent years, we, we found that. So crowdsourcing. So Amazon Turk mainly, but there are other platforms for crowdsourcing. And the interesting thing is that it works. There are many papers about that, if it works or not. Recently, we, we did this for Spanish. And even in Spanish works, because in the US, there's enough people that talk Spanish. But maybe that's the only language where we will work in the US. So what about if we don't have any of those? So suppose you have uh, no editors, it's a strange language, you, you cannot use crowdsourcing. Well, the next thing is, OK, let's do automatic procedure. Let's use the clicks. Let's assume that when people is interacting with our system, they are thinking. It's a very strong assumption. That's the only one when you have any hope of getting training data. And I want to show an example of this later. Second problem, how deep to that to judge? So you have these very expensive people. This is also a problem in crowdsourcing. 
What, we, what is better, to evaluate, to judge more queries, or to judge them more deeply? I think I, there is no answer today for that. So what is better, to have a top 10 results evaluated for double number of queries, or have top 20 results for your queries, and not doubling the number? So this would be interesting work, how to find the trade-off between depth in the judgment and number of queries. Next question. Do we judge individual queries, forgetting about the context, or we use sessions? And if we use sessions, we see that basically the person is rewriting the query until finds the right answer, and you should evaluate the whole, query, the whole session at least to know uh, how much time took to find the right answer, or how happy the person was. Maybe you need to evaluate also the effort that the person put on finding the right answer. And this is crucial for machine learning ranking algorithms. If we don't have a, a golden set for training, we cannot do anything. But the best solution, when you don't have editors and you cannot use crowdsourcing, or maybe you, because you need more data, is to use clicks. So just to give you an example, very fast, uh, some work that uh, Vanessa Murdoch and Rolof Mansoul and other people did in, in Barcelona. So what about image search? So in image search, you have less clicks than in a standard text web search. So people find the image or they don't find it. But basically, they don't browse images. Or if they browse images, only they browse until they find the right one. So one thing about images is that you don't need a snippet, in the sense that a small image is the full content of the image. And many times, that will be enough to know that you're, you found the right picture. So uh, in some sense, image snippets, which are these uh, small images, are much better than text snippets. And that, will, that implies that clicks will be better. So the, the implicit assumption here is that clicks are better in image search because you are looking at the, at the right thing and, and the whole thing. And also, the relevance judgments will be made on visual relevance, not textual relevance. So uh, the idea here was to use blocks of images to understand the clicks and then use them for training and testing. So let's assume that people is doing the right thing, and then let's try to find if we can mimic that ranking with machine learning. 